Yes. Rogology. It's a complex new science that examines two things. One, being broke, and two, staying alive despite your brokenness. Sounds very complex. It is, and more importantly, very useful. Uh, much more useful than that caveman shit they taught you at UConn. Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> caveman shit. Compared to brokeology, it's all ancient. I'm telling you. Okay, you got me interested. Let me hear a few of your theories. Theories? <laughs> you have to have theories. I mean, this new science of yours is going to be as influential as you say it is. Of course I got theories. I got all that. Theories, hypotheses, equations, oh, all that. Equations? Brokeology has equations? Ain't that what I just said? <laughs> then, profess, professor, take me back to school. Okay. I'll tell you, but this shit might just blow your mind. I thought of this one when I was in the bathroom. I wrote it out on some toilet paper. And it goes like this. Fried bologna times sidewalk sales plus minimum wage minus health insurance divided by adequate education equals brokenness times being alive Bam! Brokeology, baby! <laughs> you are a fool. Ain't nothing changed. Pops, uh, I know you want to, but you can't do things like you used to. I was doing okay until then. I just got distracted. I was. <laughs> Look. If you want, we can make your meals in the morning. We'll put it in the fridge. They'll be ready when you want. Oh, now I have to eat cold lunches? You can put them in the microwave, Pop. Cold in the microwave, huh? That's what I get? We're just trying to come up with ways to make this easier well, on me. Well, thank you, but I know all the ways to make it easier on me. Yes, you can cook for me. You can clean for me. You can give my shots in a few years when my balance starts to go. You can help me walk across the room. And after my muscles get too weak, you can give me a bath and help me use the restroom. I've talked to the doctors. I know what's happening to me. I know all the ways to make it easier on me, but I don't want easy. You know what I want? What? I want things to be back to the way they were. I want to care for myself. I want to work. Ennis hasn't called, has he? No. He was pissed this afternoon. I hope he wasn't serious about the domino game. We'll see about that. And what he said about me wanting to throw you away, you know I'd never do that, right? I could never ask you to stay here and take care of me either. I didn't raise you to be my nurse. I still don't know what to do. I thought about leaving and finding a way to come home every week. Every week? It's gonna get expensive. I know. I've even been thinking about bringing you with me. To connect? I don't wanna stay here, but I don't wanna leave you like this. But maybe I can get a two bedroom. I think you would like the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. You like the beach? Never been to the beach. <laughs> I'd be willing to do it. But I'm not. I can't, Malcolm. I would miss this house. Your life may be somewhere else, but my life is here. I can understand that. Now look, we made a lot of tough decisions in this family. When you were only four or five years old, I was laid off. Another company offered me the same job for less money. I decided to wait it out until something opened up with Randy. Money was going to be tight, and I didn't know how your mother was going to handle it. But she had my back. She became a light Nazi. If you weren't in the room, the lights had to be off. <laughs> 
did go somewhere, we took the bus, we ate as cheap as we could. I'm talking hamburger hash, homemade rolls, and peanut butter spoons for dessert. I remember peanut butter spoons. Yeah, yeah you, you dip a spoon in peanut butter and you lick it. That's right. <laughs> I love those things. I didn't know we ate them because we were broke. That's because me and your mama wouldn't let you think of our family as poor. <laughs> we weren't ashamed. We just didn't want you thinking you were beneath anybody. We as a Reasons why you should stay. First reason, barbecue. <laughs> I should stay in KC for barbecue. Not the strongest reason, but it's true. You know as well as I do, they can't grill out there like we do it in the Midwest. The chicken, the KC strip, rib tips, come on. I have missed some rib tips. Mm -hmm. But you know what I haven't missed? Hmm? Crackheads. Man, there are crackheads everywhere. Kansas City, Connecticut, I bet Disneyland got crackheads. Oh yeah, but they were different where I was. They were functional crackheads. They would smoke crack, go to work, and you wouldn't even know. <laughs> crackheads here are obvious. All right, I'll let you have it. There may not be a lot of crackheads, but I'm sure there are too many white folks. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not true, how would you know? Just listen to it. Connecticut. <laughs> that sounds like a place that's filled to the brim with white folks. You live in Kansas. Kansas probably has more white people than anybody. We live in Kansas City. It's a real city with color in it. There's a difference. No, it's Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> Why do you care? Well, your girlfriend's white. Tammy's Greek. Her great-grandfather was Greek. She looks white to me, and there's nothing wrong with that. I know, but it might be nice to live somewhere where you don't stick out so much. All right, where we at? Two to one, you should stay. Let's not forget the job at UConn. We're tied at two. Well, you have a job here, a good job. But it's not what I really want to do. You think I really want to work at that damn restaurant? You think I want to spend the rest of my life dishing out potato salad and coming home smelling like charred meat? I know you don't. Everything I wanted to do is taking the back burner to the things I have to do, which brings me to the fact you have a nephew on the way. I know this. Tammy has all sisters in her family. That means you're going to be the kid's only uncle, and he's going to need some strong male influences in his life. Can you make me feel any worse? <laughs> About another. <laughs> <laughs> I know this onesie a little big for a newborn, uh -huh. but it'll be perfect for Christmas. Santa's first gift to the baby. Santa? I don't know about that. Oh, William, don't start this again. You know, it ain't right, baby girl. My sisters, brothers, and I were all raised to believe that Mama and Daddy work hard to get us gifts, not some fat white man. <laughs> it's just for fun. Come to think about it, unless we have dumb kids, I don't think they'll even go for it. Why? What? We live in the hood. A crip neighborhood at that. You see all these boys around here wearing nothing but blue? If Santa comes through here in all that red, somebody's gonna shoot him and jack his sleigh. <laughs> Reindeers and all. <laughs> Two, we ain't got a chimney. <laughs> and we got bars on every window. <laughs> the most devious crackhead on the block can't get in here. What makes you think that Santa can? <laughs> we should talk about something else. Why, because I'm right? No, because you're gonna get yourself all worked up. Come on. Well, you don't yeah. want to start talking about Santa Holy. We've been working hard all week. It feels like we barely had a minute to relax together. Yeah. Mm. Ah. <laughs> ah. Another thing about I said, Santa. Shh. <laughs> Just hold me. You win. I can see it now. We won't teach our kids about Santa. If it makes you happy. We will teach them that Santa is inherently racist <laughs> and sexist and is another clever tool devised by the man to further oppress our people. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what else you see? Us, still married, with children who grow up to be wise and live lives that make us proud. And we all live together in a big, beautiful house, not this one, a really nice one in the neighborhood 
where you don't need bars on the window. And there's a fireplace with a chimney, so if Santa wasn't a racist tool, he could slide. <laughs> there's no crypts or blood, and our children could play in the streets. And we're happy together for a long time.